right off the rip, we've got a crazy QB run. There's seven. The first seven picks are all quarterbacks, then two more, um, and then two more in the second or three more in the second. So right off the rip, we're, we're 12 quarterbacks into this thing. Um, and we'll read that order real quick. Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, Burrow, uh, Lawrence, Hertz, Watson, uh, Jackson, Fields, and then second round, Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, and Tua Tungavailoa. Um, so yeah. that's kind of the quarterbacks go flying off the board. And that's, I think it's a yeah. good place to start. Um, you know, what's, what's your overall draft strategy for quarterbacks and super flex. And, and, you know, what have you guys been seeing in your, is this, is this regular for what you guys have been seeing in your ADP uh, yeah. data collection here or uh, what you got? Yeah. So, I mean, we preached, I mean, early this off season, these quarterbacks are flying off the board. And I think it's a testament, you know, to the quarterback market in dynasty right now. I mean, there's a, there is a pretty substantial drop off. Like some people would say the drop offs after Dak. Uh, some people would say it's after Tua. It just depends on how you feel about Tua yeah, and concussions. But Tua's been falling back recently. There, I mean, they're it, they are hard to come by. So you know, for us personally, and a lot of people have differing opinions on this, but for us personally, we like to lock up two QBs in the first two rounds if we can. And I think we both. I was at the one one, so I didn't end up having a QB that came back to me that I could grab. But you'll notice that Nathan took Tua at the two eight. So a lot of people are going to have, you know, issue with that because the people, you know, people are down on Tua as a whole right now. But I mean, I think your thought process there is that number one, there's not a ton of these QBs that, you know, are in safe situations under contract, you know, producing at a high level. I mean, Tua was a QB one. So, you know, I think when you're going through these startups, it, if you haven't done any yet, like you better be prepared. And especially in Superflex, like these quarterbacks are going to fly off the board. And yeah. it's, it makes taking, you know, a Justin Jefferson like Simon did in the first round, it makes that a little bit riskier. Um, but I, I, I can confidently tell you that all three of us are of the opinion that in super flex leagues, like having two elite quarterbacks, if you can, it's invaluable. it is, it is just a, it's number one, it's a great foundation for any contending or rebuild team. So that's, I mean, that's, that's really important in itself. And number two, I mean, it, it's a good foundation points wise too. If you've got quarterbacks that are averaging, you know, 18 plus points per game, you get, you're starting with a baseline of 40 points in PPR leagues per week. So, yeah. And I mean, right. you've got in, in our ADP, um, we, we have, um, going first 13 picks of the draft, 10 of them are QBs. Then you got your three elite wide receivers. There's no running backs going anywhere. I mean, last year, I remember seeing guys like Swift, Najee, Javante Williams, those guys going at the one, two turn. And you see how that turned out for all of those guys. Um, and I, I think the dynasty community has definitely become lower collectively as a whole on running backs with the exception of B. John Robinson. And, um, it's, I, I mean, it's just, that just shows you how valuable these QBs are, are going to be uh, yeah. going here on out. So if you can get them in startups and you're them. seeing, you know, you're seeing guys like Trey Lance, guys like Daniel Jones, guys like Kenny Pickett, they're getting pushed they're up. Starting to, they're starting to get pushed up. Like, I mean, I saw earlier in startups, like a really early startups, like once the fantasy playoffs were over, I mean, Daniel Jones was going sixth, seventh, eighth round, and he's already getting pushed up the fifth round. I was actually, you know, looking at taking him in my latest startup and he didn't make it to me in the fifth. So you're going to yeah. see some of these, you know, younger quarterbacks, especially if, if Danny Dimes gets a contract, like you're going to see him get pushed up quite a bit. I think people are confident in what Kenny Pickett has showed as well. Uh, and a lot of times I, I'll go ahead and warn you if you haven't done a startup draft, a lot of times you'll have 14 in this because, because Lance, um, you know, he went at the three one most of the time he's going before that too. So it's, it is wild out there. And if you don't have, you know, two QBs. If you go no QB in a super flex league, more, um, I, my hat is tipped to you because that is tough. And I don't, I mean, I don't think personally I could do that. So, yeah. Um, so what, what would, what's the threshold for is, is for, for what, how far you're willing to push your chips in, uh, in as far as getting an elite second quarterback, like, what what's, is it, is it Dak? Is it Kyler? Is it, is two of the cutoff? Is that, you know, Two is a cutoff for me. Well, and, a- and it just depends. Like if I'm building a team, I think either of us are comfortable if we have to. Like there are some values at QB that are fun. So Russell Wilson, like I know that yep. this season was awful for Russ, mm-hmm. but I mean, at the in the sixth round, I mean, look at the contract he signed. So when you're talking about safety and security, like the contract is a huge part of that. So you know Russ is going to be on the field and getting him in the sixth round, I'd call that safe. Uh, I would call, who else? Matt Stafford. He went in the yeah. ninth. Yeah. Mac Jones went in the ninth. 
those guys, I think, are pretty safe, too. I think I think Mac is going to be playing for the Pats for a while. And Matt Stafford, I think the thing with him was, you know, is his elbow okay? Is McVay leaving? And is Stafford going to retire? And I think his elbow's fine. I know he's staying now, and we know McVay's staying. Yeah, so he checked really, all those boxes in the positive. Um, exactly. I put Cousins in there, too. Yeah, actually. and Cousins is safe, too. So, yeah, I'm, so not, I'm, not necessarily, you know, jumping, like, through hoops to get to, like, QBs that go in the top 18 picks. But, you know... If so, you can, again, that's I think that's a big advantage for you. So you're basically first round, you're you're getting a QB is from both of you. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Or if you, if yeah, there's yeah. there's yeah. almost no possibility of anything no, else. I, I would I wouldn't say that because in my last startup, I actually took I think Jamar Chase. So it just depends. Like sometimes I don't know. It's a game. Sometimes I yeah. want to mix up my strategy. Like yeah. that's as much as I love sticking to my principles and my rules, like, I mean, I, I don't know if you, I think you'd take JJ in the first, like at a certain I, point, right? Yeah. Like, he's I mean, averaging 20, 20 something points a game. Yeah. Like in this mock where you're the quarterback where, production. Where, yeah. Where Simon's getting JJ at the, at the one eight, I think that's a really great value. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what you're starting to see here, especially, I mean, in some of the, the real money leagues that we've done, um, people have gone no QB. It, yeah. it, especially at the turn, sort of at the back end of the first start of the second. And you're, you're starting to see, I mean, Tua is falling to the third round. Yeah. And then, I mean, at that point, you're like, well, I mean, where are these other QBs going to start falling later in the draft? Where is Russ going to fall? I mean, you can get him middle to end of the sixth sometimes. Kenny Pickett, you can get in the seventh or eighth. Um, and then obviously Daniel Jones and Cousins there. So if you have the chance of, uh, of getting an elite player at a different position. I mean, that's the best player available there. Justin Jefferson is the best player available there. If you're not comfortable taking Lamar Jackson and me personally, I'm not touching fields in the first round. Um, like oh, you I, better I not, think, pal. You better not <laughs> just leave fields out your mouth, all right? <laughs> like, you better stop, dude. No, but that's... So that's fields because, is not you know, a first-round quarterback for you guys. <laughs> no, no. Well, and so listen, like, it's not... It's not anything against Fields, and we'll we're not going to slander him on here because we did that on our own YouTube channel. We got no. trashed for it, but you Great know, with Fields, he he is obviously like in redraft leagues next year. You're going to be sprinting to get Justin Fields as your quarterback, but you know the problem really? in Dynasty, I, I think, lies in the fact that he's yet to establish himself as an elite passer or even really a competent passer at this point. He has that elite, like as elite rushing upside as you've seen. And, you know, our worry with him and our, our, our issue with where he's going in startups is, you know, it really lies in the fact that we are more comfortable pivoting to somebody like Deshaun Watson or Kyler Murray while there's question marks with both of them, you know, one with injury and one obviously not playing football for a long time. They both have monster deals. And so the deals. When, yep. when, I'm, when I'm looking at, you know, which one I'd rather prefer or which one I'd rather have, I'm just leaning the other guys with fields every time. Now, will I take fields in the late first for market value? Like if he got to the one twelve and you know, he was there probably, I probably would because I know people are going to want to pivot to Justin Fields because he's everybody's golden boy. Yep. And that's where we missed on Jalen hurts last year. And and that's why it really hurt us in in the long run is we were so adamantly against just or Justin Fields or Jalen hurts value got there um, is in, in we never, we never took our shot there to try to ship him off for market value for the one-off chance that he did increase in value, which he obviously did a full half round. So, but you um, know, Hertz, Hertz is is firmly planted in there for you guys now, though. I think so because I think he's earned it. I, I mean, there's, I don't, I don't see a situation where he's not going to get paid at this point. Like, I think that that's what I need to see from Fields. Like, if, if I, if I have a feeling that Chicago is going to inch towards some kind of long-term commitment to Justin Fields. Like that's really it. It's nothing about talent. It's nothing about production. It's about longevity. Like, and the longevity. Thing. And yeah, I mean, look, it's not, it's not set in stone right yeah, now. And that's my one concern. And that's why personally I'm still taking Lawrence and Herbert over Hertz is I, I mean, the, those three QBs, actually none of them have contracts. If you're looking at the QB going in the first round, who out of the mega deals, it's Mahomes, Allen, and Deshaun, and that's Kyler. It. Ky- well, Kyler's He's not, not even, even going, going in the first round anymore. And with Hurts, I mean, look at look at what's happened with Lamar Jackson. He won MVP like three years ago. He won MVP, and he still doesn't have a deal. I yeah, mean, that, I mean, that really I think, tells think, you what. 
Yeah, but I think I think that one's a little bit of an outlier just because the the I, agent thing might be slowing things down, and then you know Deshaun he, he seems to be really after that Deshaun guaranteed money when you've we've seen some other quarterbacks you know kind of that seem that deal seems like the outlier, but that seems like Lamar's the outlier chasing the outlier deal without the agent, which I think makes things a little more difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, but, and I get but that, I mostly but again, agree with you there. Yeah, I mean the the injuries have just they have contributed to that to that too and now we've seen Hertz's first first year here where he has not been there towards the end of the end of the season and while that didn't affect them obviously at all because they still got the one seed like he's banged up and then you know with him being a, a rushing QB consistently like how is that going to look for him longevity wise that's why it's lean Herbert and Lawrence but again I mean if anyone's taking Hertz at the one five one six there's just no argument against it anymore. I'm, I'm not- just not I'm, I'm tired of arguing yeah. against it I, I can't so <laughs> yeah and, and with and yeah you're right Lamar is an outlier I mean I, I'm comfortable and he's comfortable taking Lamar in the first round of startups because we know he's gonna get paid. yeah so if we are we have to with her. somebody he's, he's gonna pay himself, so. yeah it's yeah, not that's pay. not that's not something that we're worried about at all with fields I'm still I think we're still both not sure if he's gonna get that big extension that big contract so, so Kyler, once over, we see, Kyler over fields yeah 100 percent. yeah and, and the nice thing the nice the nice thing about, yeah, I would say pretty much every I time. mean, he has a passing volume, too. He doesn't even, ha- he can stop running and still be a top 12 QB every single year because of his passing volume. Fields doesn't have that. I mean, but the nice thing right now is you can get Kyler and more for Fields. Like, that's, I think what's so appealing about Kyler Murray right now is that he's starting to slip into the mid-second of these startups. When you look at his contract, when you look at the fact that he's going to get a new head coach, when you look at, you know, historically what his production has been like, and honestly, the fact that he stayed fairly healthy for his the type of you know the style of play that he has, there's a lot to like about Kyler. So when you, I think the contract is probably the biggest thing there. And we're we're, kind, we're pretty conservative with our quarterbacks. We're kind of stingy about it. We're kind of like grumpy old men when it comes to <laughs> evaluating really quarterbacks. But but yeah, I mean until until I know that Fields has that security, definitely. And that's why I think I'm more comfortable with Hurts now is because if you're playing dynasty in a three year window. Like, you know, Jalen Hurts at this point is probably going to get three more years. And even with Tua, like, I know there's speculation about Brady going to Miami and whatever, but if you look at what Tua's done and you look at the support he has from McDaniel, like, I, I'm fairly confident that we're going to see him for at least three more years, which makes me pretty comfortable drafting him, especially at his price. So, yeah, we're stingy about quarterbacks. I know a lot, a lot of people are more aggressive in terms of, you know, getting those elite wide receivers and running backs. And we just, I think the, safe play for us every time is just to go quarterback and we've found that this year in particular like you're gonna have to get him quick so yeah, yeah it, it it also seems to vary from room to room with me i mean i've i've, I've had him i did him we did him last year we do him with our patreon people and we, we do a couple of month each month and you know they, they're all different and, and obviously these are mocks so you know i know i play mocks differently a lot a lot of the times i'll even kind of not necessarily select the guy that I want just to see, cause I want to see where the values are. Like I know where I would take them, but I want to see kind of ha- right. how that would pan out. It doesn't do me that much good to just keep taking the same guys over and over and over to, you know, to, to the value yeah. that I like them at. I'd rather, you know, let's what, what does the other, the rest of the market say about these guys and yeah. their value? Yeah, um, we do the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, right. and that's, I mean, that's ended up going really well for us. I mean, we've passed up on players that we really want to take in a specific round and we're like, well, you know what? Their market value isn't that great. They could even come back to us. And then they do. And you're like, I just got <laughs> the yeah. player I wanted around later, later plus a bonus in the round that I thought I was going to have to take them. Yeah. So um, it's yeah. definitely really helpful to, to be attentive to that market value to, to the ADP of these players and, and how much they fluctuate and differ right now. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when you're like, you know, I, if I want to get to a, I've got to get them at the one, two turn. And he was consistently going ahead of Dak, um, maybe even finding himself ahead of Kyler post injury. And then now you see two are falling into the third round because of his most recent concussion and not being able to close out the season. And you're like, Oh my gosh. I yeah. I mean, I thought I was last, have to get him off season, last off season, you were probably in anywhere from the sixth to the fourth round with Tua. Um, yep. So, you know, yeah. you, you caught that, you know, mid season swing where, you know, when, when things were going right and he was stroking, you know, he's obviously a really good quarterback, uh, yep. but you, you, and I think Dak is maybe kind of in that same, obviously we're not worried about Dak going anywhere, but like, so you, you, you said two is the, the line for you for me. 
I can't pull the trigger on two at two eight. And I, you know, it's just, I think there is just some uncertainty. I think he will, is going to play somewhere. Is it Miami? No, but do you know, obviously I like that Miami situation the yeah. best out of just about any other thing that could necessarily take place. Are the concussions a concern? They, normally I'm not a guy who gets caught up in any sort of injury. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Some guys can't get right, and other guys are Keenan Allen, and you take the discount for a little while, and then they're never fucking hurt again. Obviously, he's 30-something, and now he's been a little banged up. The concussions are a little bit different game, and it does seem like maybe that they have already played around with Tom, um, that there's a lot of connections to Tom. If if Tua isn't in Miami, is he still at 2-8 for you? Probably not. I mean, how, how much better can it get? You're with Mike McDaniel. You've got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. I mean, those guys do make Tua better. And while I believe in his, you know, individual ability to quarterback in the NFL, you you can't deny that those guys are absolutely, number one, boosting his NFL level of play, but number two, boosting his fantasy production. So, yeah. as it, so I mean, if, it, if I, I'm curious, if it were to stay how it is and Tua would be starting in Miami next year and you knew that, where are you comfortable taking him? I think if if everything was fine and dandy and and I wasn't worried about anything, I I think I think anywhere in that second round is um a hundred percent okay. I mean, shit, maybe even back of the first round. Like if I know that that two is right. healthy and he's he's the guy and and you know they're gonna they're, they're moving forward. I mean, shit, they were they were a tough out for for a while and that's 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 the Dolphins and that was McDaniel's first go round um in there and and you saw the, the the quick turnaround and growth. I mean, we're talking about fields here that we're unsure of, and it's like two we were unsure of. We like two a good bit in the off season right now, a little rich for my blood where he's going. Uh, but you know, it was the same thing. You surround fields, you, they surrounded Tua, they surrounded Hertz, and and look, you know, all these quarterbacks that have taken the next step get good surroundings and a good coach. Um, and you know, we 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 have that with Tua right now. We're just not certain that a he's the. I mean, the the brain's a, a, a tough thing. Um, right. Plus, you know, there I think there is a little bit of it's not as safe as I would like it to be for a second round draft pick. I get that. Yeah, yeah that makes. I think that makes sense. And you know, I think I think we'll just have to see with Tua. I I don't know. I'm really hoping he stays there. I I don't. I will say. I don't think I've picked any Tua in startup in actual startups. I think I've done three, and I'm only doing I think three or four this off season, so I'm almost done. But what I find is that number one, sometimes Dak and Kyler are falling as far as Tua did in this draft. Mm-hmm. It just it, it helps when you're drafting with you know stronger players because they're going to take you know they're, they're, they know they got they've got to get the quarterbacks locked up. But I mean, a lot of times at this at the spot that Nathan's at, I'll get Kyler, like which is crazy because then I can get Trevor Lawrence. Joe Burrow and Kyler Murray, which I I mean, to me is just a cheat code of a start. But I mean, the other thing you have to consider with Tua is because his market value is so low right now, you can probably, you, I mean, maybe not in this draft, you maybe could have afforded to wait and get him in the third. Like, I mean, that's, if if you really do believe in what he, you know, what Tua is able to do and you really do believe that he's in the right situation and he's going to be there, then take him in the third or fourth, because at this point you're looking at where you can get him from market value standpoint, he's falling to that that level yeah and i mean with this draft capital there's just i think there's always going to be a chance for the next two to three years that i mean if he loses his opportunity now he's going to get an opportunity elsewhere and he will spike in value i mean we're seeing this with zach wilson being that second overall pick uh just a couple years ago he, i mean he's going not even in the top 12 rounds now buy him go go get him he he costs you nothing he will get another chance and he will go up in adp same thing with Fields. We were talking about this with Fields when Fields was dang near valueless um, earlier this season. We were like, you know, what are you going to lose if you if you either go and grab him or if you own him and just hold on to him? Don't sell him at at his at his value or, or at his lowest value. Um, I, and again, this is the same thing you're seeing with Kyler. You saw it with Dak when he got injured. Um, Kenny Pickett has actually he he was someone reached for him. Actually, he well four twelve. I've never seen Kenny Pickett go at the four twelve. That was before. earlier. That was earlier, earlier than normal. He's usually yeah. going sixth to seventh round, and I mean, there's a lot of room for him to rise as well. So those are the QBs that I'm really kind of targeting, and why I think Tua is fine, even if you're uncertain personally about your opinion of Tua and what he could be long term. He does have the draft capital to continue to get those opportunities and someone will be high on him in one of your leagues at some point. And if you're not comfortable with him, punt, 
his value and, and just get a higher return than what you um, had to give up when you invested in him. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm going to, I'll push back a little bit on uh, the, the QB draft strategy. Um, I'll, I'll, I will say oh, oh. I'm, I'm what's that? I said, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, do I want to off the rip a hundred percent? Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, get pigeonholed and pushed into it. Um, you know, just going over, like I could take three, um, super flex leagues from this year that, that were all 150 to $250 leagues. So, you know, not huge buy-ins, but you know, it's not, we're not playing for 20 bucks where, you know, it's, it's peanuts, whatever, maybe the, and that doesn't necessarily mean the players are, are much better, but you know, there's at least a little more skin in the game when, when you're trading and, and drafting and, and the winners of, of the, the quarterbacks that they had were Tommy and golf golf and Minshew Pat Mahomes and, and Huntley. Those were the three winning teams quarterbacks. Um, you know, so is it imperative to have, is it an advantage to have two elite quarterbacks? Certainly. Um, but you know, there isn't, again, you guys talked about it in the beginning of this, the state of the quarterback position right now is so volatile. Like, I mean, by the time next year goes, I mean, half these guys that were drafting up here, like, you know, Hertz's his value could maybe go down. I don't know. I don't think so. But, uh, you know, Fields' his value, we don't know. Like, it just seems like quarterback as a position, I've just seen it go all over the place for all the years that I've been playing. There will be the constants. You know, I don't think Burrow, Herbert, uh, Mahomes, and, and you know, th- those big guys really aren't going anywhere. You know, Lamar's kind of starting to slide back. Dak has slid back. Trevor Lawrence has gone up. Um, so, I don't know that it's necessarily imperative. I, I I don't feel strongly that I have to have it, and I'm not going to get pigeonholed in this draft here. I took Jamar Chase over Lamar Jackson. I feel fine with that. I don't love this team that I necessarily have, um, but you know, I do. I, I don't feel like I absolutely have to have elite quarterback play. Like I would like to have one good one, and then I'm okay with with kind of the rest. I didn't really get to that point in here, just mostly because I'm I was kind of playing around with who would go where, and and some guys went a lot higher than I thought. And there's no way I would have drafted him there. Like I'm fine with taking Kenny Pickett. No chance I'm taking him at four twelve or in that when I was coming through there at four nine. I wasn't even thinking about Kenny Pickett. Um, yeah. You know, Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins. I like Kirk Cousins fifth, sixth round. I think he's a fantastic QB two. He gets shit on and maybe he's not the best real life quarterback. But as far as fantasy, a QB two, I think that's a, you know, that's great value consistently. And and the play is always, you know, good enough to win you games. Um, and Daniel Jones has kind of reemerged himself there. I like the golf picks late. I do like that Russell Wilson at 512. I'd be fine with that. I mean, you know, it's not popular. It's not sexy. It's not it's really not that fun to even pull that trigger right there. But I mean, that was a guy in the second round last year. Um, Matt yeah. Stafford was a guy who was in the second round for a while. Like you guys pointed out, went in the ninth round. So, you know, if if my team would have started off with with golf and and Daniel Jones or, uh, you know, Russell Wilson and golf or Russell Wilson and Stafford. I feel fine with that going into the season um, and, and being able to compete, because I know that the rest of my team is going to be really strong. Uh, throughout and you know depth can certainly help uh, you know win championships and and get through the doldrums of the fantasy season here so you know Jason the guy who was on before that we started there he he would uh, he'd be screaming at me right now he he refuses to go through uh, life without two the best quarterbacks he could possibly have Uh, you know uh, just a matter of personal preference it they're obviously like the 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 best currency in Superflex is, you know, clearly a quarterback. And it's really hard yeah. to get an elite quarterback without drafting them in the startup draft or in the rookie draft. Um, but I don't know that you necessarily have to have it to to win championships. No, I wouldn't say. I, I think if you're talking, your example was Russ and Kirk Cousins. I think that's fine. I think you'd say that's fine. I mean, those are fairly seen championships with Cousins and Carr. Well, look, you're, and here's yeah. the thing. Right. You're going to see championships with Jared Goff and then starting a wide receiver in your flex. I mean, when it comes down to it, 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 it's luck. I mean, a lot of it is luck at the end of the day. Like, how, how do your players end up performing in those playoff weeks? I mean, that it, again... We do so much of this strategy, it comes down to luck. So do you need to have two QBs? No, you don't. You don't need to have anything because anybody can come in and they can they can manage a crappy team. We could They could do stuff that we hate, and then they could beat us in the championship because all their players right. went off. I mean, you see it all the time. Mm-hmm. So no, I don't think you need to. And I think especially short-term, 
if you're talking to somebody like Tom Brady and Jared Goff as your QBs, you're like, yeah, you can absolutely win, you know, a championship with those guys. I think the, I think the security more lies in dynasty long-term when you have two QBs. So sure. while on a, while I think going into your first year, especially after a startup, you have a pretty good idea of, or at least, you know, a fairly good idea of what the players you drafted at other skill positions are going to score like. So, you know, with that, you can kind of compensate based on, you know, what you know short term and you can maybe let the QB position slide. You can rely on those other skill position players and you can still go out and win a championship. The problem lies, you know, when you, when you don't have those really safe, secure QBs in three to four years, because then you might find yourself, you know, getting into a rebuild faster than you thought. If you drafted a contending team, you might find yourself playing QB scramble and overpaying for guys because you don't have anybody to start. I mean, and either way you look at it, it is, you're at a disadvantage if you get to a point where you don't have QBs to start. Like sure, if, you, sure. if, you, if you don't have a QB to start in Superflex, I mean, you're looking at that and you're like, crap. And a lot of people will overreact to that. And so, no, it, it's absolutely not totally necessary. It's really just personal preference. And that's yeah. kind of how we, how we choose to roll um, with oh, that, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not meaning to say that I wouldn't roll that way. I'm just not going to get pushed into having to have to well, have it. Um, like you have to No, right. Yeah. And that's completely understandable. And I mean, you've seen us go in a lot of startup drafts here before taking that elite wide receiver. We would say we would draw the line where we'd be, we're pretty opinionated on taking a running back in the first round. Yeah. Well, or, uh, and if, if you're looking at your first guy being that elite top running back, I mean, that talk about a volatile position yeah well he, here's it, it, go ahead so sorry finish the thought finish the thought oh you're good i mean that's pretty much all i had to say is it's so volatile if we're just leaning these wide receivers because uh, if you're gonna take someone else in the first round that isn't a quarterback because they have i mean their their adp is pretty right. much guaranteed those elite ones chase well, is a, I, I mean chase is a great pick there by the way like i totally i took chase in my last startup in the first round like i do that they, so. he should be going in the first yeah round. He, he's, he's he, averaging 20 chase, points a game yeah if chase and jay jeff aren't going in the first round i mean right good gracious two of the you know teams that i had in the in my championships this year my qbs were pat mahomes and herbert don't ask me how i got those two on the same team right wild but so that's obviously an outlier but then lawrence and lamar which i took lamar in the first in the startup and then i took Lawrence is when he was going second round. And yeah. so, so it, that just goes to show like you, I, I think we've seen on plenty of our leagues, like you have these teams that do not have quarterbacks that you think number one are safe long term, but number two are elite quarterbacks that are safe and they're still making the championship winning. So, yeah. and then so, you invest in guys like Rogers who you think is super safe and a great value and is, you know, going to be a surefire QB one, no matter what. And then he just screws your team. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which was a couple of my leagues as well. And yeah. I think I think no matter what happens with QBs at the beginning, our I think both of our number one rule when we're doing these startup drafts is take the value that falls. So right. I mean, if Justin Jefferson is falling to the one eleven, I'm taking him over quarterbacks. I just will. Not, I mean, not only because Justin Jefferson's an elite, proven wide receiver, what, he will may, probably end up being one of the best wide receivers ever playing in the NFL. But because he, I know like if I'm going to places where I can check his value, like keep trade cut, I know he's like the fifth best player on keep trade cut. I know that people are normally taking him sooner. Our number one rule. I mean, I won't, I won't break this for anything. And I, I think like you, I won't be pigeonholed into doing anything because what a lot of people do. And, and I think sometimes people mistake our strategy for, you know, tending to panic but I will not panic and take QBs. If I mean, I did that in plenty of startups last year. If people are going to, if there's going to be a, a draft where there goes 20 QBs in the first three rounds, fine. Like, I mean, I know, I know that I'll find my way into QBs eventually because somebody's going to need something else that I have. So, so sure, I think, right. And that would be circling back to kind of what, what, what my ending point would be on this is, is exactly that. Yeah. So, um, I, it's not, not gospel. Everybody wins different ways. That's just how we do it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's, to, to it's, be good. Able to it's definitely grab, good to hear both sides. Right. To be able to grab all the all the other assets and, you know, trading is going to be about volume, the volume that you send out. You know, you got to put the time in to, to get the value back out of what it is. Um, so, you know, if I, if I know I need a quarterback, but I know I've got 
you know, five or six other starting players, you know, somebody is going to panic somewhere on some quarterback that's on their team and say, hey, I need I drafted three of them. Maybe I'll give away the second one and keep the third one because I need a starting running back or I need a starting tight end nope. or I need a start. You know, so you can't I think that's a good you just don't panic and, and feel like you absolutely have to be drug into the, the worst value.